Hello there, my name is Richard Arundel and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Today we're going to be having a look at how we can size solar arrays for spacecraft. So bear in mind this is very top level and a kind of first principles look at how we might achieve this. If learning how to design spacecraft sounds really interesting to you, then please hit that like and subscribe button and look forward to new videos in the future for MATLAB tutorials, a bit of science, a bit of theory, so many projects, so little time. So for this tutorial, we're going to have a quick look at solar array theory and what it's about, and that's we're just going to cover that in one slide. We're then going to have a look at some of the parameters you'll need in order to start calculating other results that you'll need for the solar arrays and then we're going to have a look at actually some of the MATLAB code and the user interface that I've created which is free and open source download. So grab a brew and let's get stuck in. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to quickly go over what solar array theory is about so you can appreciate what's going on and that way we can then look at the MATLAB code and the GUI and understand where we need to get some of the parameters, okay? So basically, the idea behind a solar array is that photons in sunlight basically come into contact with the solar panels and what it does, it excites the atoms of the actual material that the solar panel is made of and this in turn makes the electrons inside move. This movement of the electrons therefore allows the creation of DC electricity, which is what could be used to power spacecraft systems. So the efficiency of solar cells is around about 20% or so at the time of making this video, but there's a lot of technology and a lot of great companies out there who are working very hard to improve this efficiency. So that number is likely to change over the course of time. So the MATLAB code that I've created will be future-proofed in the sense that you can actually edit the efficiency of a solar cell. So this is something to consider. Okay, so ideally solar arrays of a spacecraft want to make the most of the sunlight duration whilst it's in orbit. The amount of solar flux that a solar cell can receive is dependent on the distance between the spacecraft solar panels and the Sun. So if you're somewhere, say, Venus or Mercury, the solar flux will be significantly higher than it would be at Mars or beyond. And what you'll find is, is that the further away you, you get from the Sun, it gets to a point where the solar flux is so low that spacecraft designers have to consider alternative means for powering their spacecraft. The final calculation we're going to consider in this tutorial is the fact that solar cells will degrade over time. So depending on the duration of a mission, we can factor that in as well. And also the angle of the solar cells and the orientation towards the sun. And you may have noticed that on spacecraft systems, many solar arrays have motors that allow it to actually change its orientation so that it can ensure it faces the sun at an optimal angle. So with all that then, let's move on to the next slide. So the parameters that you'll need to get a sort of initial idea of solar array sizing, there's two parts to it, which is the spacecraft mission and system parameters and the solar array specifications themselves. So for the spacecraft mission, what you'll need is a rough idea of how much energy drain there is from the battery, which again will be a subject for a future video that I'll go through on battery sizing. Secondly, you'll need the length of sunlight period during the spacecraft's orbit, and I've actually already got a video already published for this, uh, which is the shadow sunlight, so check that out, and that's got a MATLAB tutorial as well associated with it, and you can use the output of that to plug straight into this MATLAB example. What you'll also need is the power required by the spacecraft, the emission lifetime, and the solar flux of the orbit. So the specifications for the solar array will generally come from a manufacturer's product sheet or other numbers that you might derive. And these are efficiencies for the battery charge, the array output, and the solar cell efficiencies. There'll also be an inherent degradation factor. 
as well as the lifetime degradation and of course as we mentioned in the previous slide the optimal angle of a ray to solar source now the angle might be different because of where it's configured on the spacecraft itself so with all these specifications and parameters let's see what we can do to calculate the numbers that we're looking for so this slide shows a screenshot from the MATLAB calculation that is going to come up in a moment and normally I would put up a standard equations to demonstrate this but to be honest the parameterization makes it fairly straightforward so hopefully by looking at the code you can see that it's relatively straightforward multiplication and division of different parameters that you just do in a logical sequence okay so in the MATLAB code I've deliberately named the parameters very clearly so you can see what they are once you look into the code itself but again feel free to download this file I've got the link up there on the slide and I'm also going to invite you to pause the video here if you want to have a look at the code more closely so here's a screenshot of the GUI interface that I've come up with and has basically turned all of those equations and parameters into something useful and what we've got up here in the top left we have the spacecraft system parameters so all those little white boxes you can edit and when you edit them it will recalculate the entire sheet for you so it um, will update as you need to do it with all the spacecraft system parameters are up there you've then got the solar array specifications which you put in the bottom left hand corner and again all of that can be edited except for the cosine loss factor which is grayed out and the useful calculation outputs are on the right hand side of the blue squares and with that we've got the power required to recharge the battery we're looking at the end of life specific powers and the total power required by the solar panel array and finally we can also get a rough idea of how big the area is required for the solar array itself and with that there's some fairly straightforward calculations there to then estimate the mass of the system so although this is a fairly straightforward example of what you could do with MATLAB in terms of designing a solar array for spacecraft the output from it is very useful for a system level design and you can see that there's an interesting crossover with the video that I did before about the shadow sunlight and what you'll see with the theme going on with future MATLAB tutorials that I'm going to be doing is that they will all interlink together and the idea is that ultimately there will be a collection of MATLAB tutorials that will cover an entire spacecraft system design and that will be done at a top level or first principle so this certainly would be useful for student projects and I very much encourage anybody listening to this and finding it useful to download the MATLAB program and take it away and update it change it around and add to it in fact let me know if you do it and you expand on it somehow I'd love to hear what you do with the initials baseline coding and so with that that brings us to the end of this MATLAB tutorial and this final slide here we've got some book references so you can have a look at the sort of books that are out there that would help you in your own studies and I've got lots and lots of other literature recommendations on the website link down at the bottom of the slide there and I update that regularly so please check in every now and again and if you like the sound of a book click on the links and explore what's out there so as a final reminder before the video finishes if you enjoyed this video and you'd love to see more spacecraft engineering topics discussed and other tutorials then hit that subscribe button and the little bell so that you can see when new videos get uploaded so until next time have a great day stay safe and look forward to seeing you soon